the ever-increasing mess behind me is giving me a tremendous amount of anxiety. I need, I need, I need, I need to do this. I need to set some time. It's just, it's like we're at the end of the year, right? Like this is, this is the last bit of the year. And I, I'm trying to like wrap up all the videos for the end of the year. And I mean, I know I'm just doing these, what are you playing once a week, but I kind of want to do this, like what, like the state of the collection 2023, um, where I like go and look and see if I can figure out how many games I got this year and like how much my collection grew and shit like that. But it's like, it's, it's just, it's too much between all of that and work and like, you know, family stuff, we've got stuff going on and, uh, and I got work. <laughs> Did I mention work? I'm just, I'm just busy and it gets a mess and I, I get so stressed, so stressed about it. Ah. All right, what am I playing? Let's talk about what I'm playing, because that's what the video's about. Um, I have my Pong speaker hat. Um, and little, little fluffy things flying all over the place. What in the what? Um, yeah, I got a little spot, pot, Pong speaker hat. Uh, I was going to have music playing, but, um, you know, I didn't set that up. So now it's just just a hat. It's just a hat with the obnoxiously thick brim. So whatever. All right, what am I playing? Well, first off, I'm still playing Lords of the Fallen. Playing this on the PlayStation 5, playing it with my friends. Uh, I really, really am loving Lords of the Fallen. It's, it's absolutely not a perfect game, and it's absolutely got an awful lot of flaws. In fact, Probably more flaws than it really should have, but in spite of the, the flaws that it does have, I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm having a hell of a lot of fun playing it with my friends, and I think I would have a lot of fun if I was playing it on my own. Uh, it's, it's a great Souls-like, I'm not going to lie, I'm really enjoying it. Um, but, you know, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, and it's got a lot of problems. Um, you know, and there's there's a lot of things that Lords of the Fallen gets right, uh, but there's also a lot of things that they get wrong. Uh, in fact, for everything that they get right, they usually get something wrong about that exact same thing, which seems really weird and really paradoxical, but that's what it is. That's what's going on with this game. To give you some quick examples, uh, multiplayer. Um, they, they get some stuff right, really right with multiplayer. Um, it's really easy to get set up. There's absolutely no level requirements, which is awesome. It, it means that people can play independent of each other if you're playing co-op. It also means that you can uh, invade people of any level. You know, it doesn't matter what your level is. It's just going to scale you appropriately. Um, in addition to this, there's no need to be in the same area. Whether you're playing co-op or whether you're playing PvP, you know, you can just be anywhere and get invited or invade somebody from anywhere else in the game. Even areas you haven't been to, you can go and, and be invited to or uh, PvP in. In fact, PvP is it, it's really incredibly fun. It's quick and painless uh, to join matches. Um, and it's, honestly, it's not even something that I feel too bad about when somebody invades me. Unlike something like Elden Ring or Dark Souls, Souls where, uh, you know, invasions are things that I really want to avoid. In Lords of the Fallen, I actually really enjoy PvP. Um, I, I have been playing it a lot on my own, invading other people, because I'm trying to get the currency for the PvP merchant, because there's stuff there that I want. 
Um, it's just stupid easy to hop into a PvP match, and the people you invade, they, they can't just escape into a boss room, uh, unlike Dark Souls. So there's no wasted invasions sort of thing. It, it, it makes it much more cohesive to play PvP. Um, in addition to this, PvP also seems really nicely balanced. If you invade into a game where people are playing co-op, uh, you're going to be at a pretty significant disadvantage. There doesn't seem to be any exploits that people frequently take advantage of, uh, like they do in from software games, to give them an unfair advantage when they invade a game that has more than one player. You come into a PvP game in Lords of the Fallen, and there's two people playing co-op, you really are going to have to work to get that win. It's, it's going to be very difficult, and I like that. It doesn't... It doesn't lend itself to the really easy, cheesy invasions that you can get in something like Elden Ring or Dark Souls, where somebody can come in with, you know, endgame gear and endgame items that they cheesed a way to get to their low-level character, and then they come in and just completely trounce you. Uh, it, it, it seems very balanced, and I really do like that. However, for all of that stuff that is right, like I said, there's a lot of stuff that it gets wrong. Uh, with the PvP and the multiplayer, uh, the netcode seems incredibly buggy and poorly optimized. Uh, for example, when we play, we frequently have to restart our game in between sessions. You can't just sleep your system and then come back online, or you can't, you know, have somebody leave your game and then re-invite somebody else without having to restart the entire game. It, you, you try to invite somebody without restarting, and it gives you these errors. In addition to that, games are kind of a laggy mess. If you don't have utterly stellar internet, then the person with the, with the, with the less than perfect internet is really going to suffer to the point where, you know, it's almost unplayable. Um, one of my friends has an internet connection that is a little bit uh, suspect. It's not always great. And whenever we go into his game, it's a laggy, buggy mess. And whenever he comes into our game, it's just as bad. It's just that the, the net code is terrible. Another example of this, uh, sometimes they get stuff right and then they also get things wrong in that same thing, uh, is level design. Um, as far as what they get right, the levels are big, sprawling, beautifully designed levels. Uh, they've got lots of looping, shortcut filled goodness. Uh, they can be really, really neat. Uh, but what they get wrong is that like 90% of the time, the shortcuts are completely worthless. You'll go along and you'll find a new shortcut and it's just like not remotely useful in your general gameplay. You'll never come back to that shortcut. You'll never use the shortcut you just unlocked. In addition to that, the level layouts are frequently confusing, uh, which makes getting lost entirely too easy. Um, let's talk about the graphics. So graphically, uh, something to get right is it's, you know, it's got some really nice effects. Switching over to the Umbral has some really great visual flair to it. Seeing, you know, being able to hold up your lamp and seeing into the Umbral lair is just always enjoyable. It's always a neat um, graphical feast to see it done. Um, and at times the game can be utterly gorgeous. It, it really can. There's a lot of great design to the world. But what they get wrong with graphics is that it's incredibly poorly optimized. It results in frequent frame stutters and a lot of moderate dips in FPS. Um, you know, for things that seemingly should be fine. Uh, one of the early levels in the game, I can't remember the name of it, um, it has a P. It's like, there, it's like an alliteration with two Ps, and I can't remember the name. But the point is, is it's out on these uh, platforms that are kind of uh, attached to the side of a cliff face. And while you're out there, there's rain coming down. And it looks really cool. Like, visually, it's very stunning. But, yeah, you throw in that, that rain effect on top of the umbral effects, and on top of all the other graphical flourishes they've got, and the game really chuck. It really performs badly. And then there's other times where you'll just be going along and all of a sudden the frame will dip down into the teens for no reason whatsoever. It's not like there's new graphical effects 
or big giant vistas that you're viewing off into the distance or big giant enemies. It's just for whatever reason, the game just decides, OK, now I'm going to go down to 12 frames per second. Um, yeah, it's it's a very interesting, strange game in that, you know, it's very fun. I'm enjoying it a lot, but there's a lot of stuff that it does really, really bad. And for everything that it does good, there's probably something else that it does bad. Um, all that being said, like I said, I, I really am enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, if you are somebody who likes Souls games, you know, I think you'd enjoy this. It's a pretty fun game. Certainly if you like playing uh, online with your friends, this one, frankly, is easier to play online than most Souls games out there. Uh, it's just really straightforward to get it up, set up and, and running, and it's it's a lot of fun. So yeah, Lords of the Fallen. I'm enjoying it. Not done with it, but I'm still enjoying it. All right, what's the next game I'm playing? Well, next one I'm playing is I'm still playing uh, Vengeful Guardian Moonrider. I'm playing this on the Switch. You know, I don't really have too much else to say about Vengeful Guardian Moonrider. I think I already described it pretty well last week, but, you know, to kind of recap, it is a, a retro-inspired, um, kind of 16-bit-inspired uh, side-scrolling platform game, and it takes a lot of inspiration from games like uh, Shinobi Shadow Dancer and uh, the classic Mega Man X titles. And, yeah, it's also made by Joy Masher, who are the guys who did Blazing Chrome and Odalis and a bunch of other great games. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I think I'm about 75% through the game. Just going by the uh, the number of levels that are available, because you can select which level you want to go into, but going by how many levels I've completed and how many I have left and kind of giving myself a little bit of fudge room for, you know, potential levels that are after the ones that are on the screen. Because a lot of the times in these type of Mega Man games, they do that. They'll they'll give you like maybe a dozen levels or six levels or nine levels to go through. And then when you're done with those, you have some additional stuff you have to do before the end of the game. But assuming all that, I would estimate I'm probably about 75% done. Uh, I think if I were to really sit down and play it this weekend, uh, I could finish it. Um, unfortunately, this last weekend, I spent most of my play my time playing Lords of the Fallen. So uh, Vengeful Guardian Moonrider kind of sat there. Um, unplayed for most of the weekend. I think I maybe put in an hour tops. Um, but I am still playing it. I am still enjoying it. And uh, it's a great game. I recommend it highly if you're looking for a retro 16-bit inspired, you know, action platform game. You could do a lot worse. It's a pretty great game. Okay, what, what am I playing next? So the next thing I'm playing is Elden Ring. I am playing this uh, on my Steam Deck almost exclusively. Um, I've, I've, I've played a little bit on PC to record a uh, video to put over me talking, but uh, for the most part, I'm playing on my Steam Deck. Now, I don't really have too much new things to say about Elden Ring. I've talked about it before. I've talked about how much I love it. And, you know, I really do. But, uh, man, playing it on the Steam Deck OLED is amazing it's like playing the game uh for the first time again like it, it really does look spectacular um i have not played it on pc with hdr uh so i don't know if it supports hdr i also haven't played it on the playstation 5 with hdr my uh um my hd tv my 4k hd tv that supports a hdr uh, I have purchased since uh, beating Elden Ring the last time. So I don't know if I've ever really seen this game in HDR. I didn't even know that it supported it. And maybe it doesn't, but holy cow, it looks amazing on the Steam Deck OLED. Like it's, it's like it's a, it's like it's a whole new game or it's like it's an HD remaster. That's kind of what it feels like. You know, when you play something and it's, you know, it's the same game, but it's got like higher resolution kind of a thing. And I know it's not higher resolution, but just that extra color palette really does make the game pop. Or, you know, maybe it's just the super fancy screen on the Steam Deck OLED. Regardless, whatever it is, I'm having a lot of fun. And it just looks amazing. Um, 
I also really like that the Steam Deck OLED has, you know, an improved battery life. The last time that I played Elden Ring on my Steam Deck, you know, I, I had to turn it turn a lot of the settings down um, in order to, to kind of eke out, you know, maybe an hour and an hour and a half tops worth of gameplay on my Steam Deck before having to charge it again. Um, but with this new one, man, I can go like, I could probably go more than two hours. Like, honestly, by the time that uh, I get tired playing the game in, in handheld mode, you know, it, the, the Steam Deck is, is still got a lot of charge left. So the point is, is that now there's more battery life uh, while playing my Steam Deck than my individual stamina for playing a handheld game. So that's awesome. But yeah, I'm playing it. I, uh, I'm trying to think where I am. I got, I finished, uh, I finished up, uh, the Academy. Was it the Raya Lucari Academy? Is that, is that the, the right name? I finished that up, uh, but then I, uh, went and decided to go do a bunch of, like, you know, uh, uh, dungeons and things, optional content around the map. Even though I don't need to, have to do, like, really any of it. This is New Game Plus for me. I've got, you know, all the gear that I need, and I, I'm... You know, I don't need to farm mats or anything, so I, I could just beeline it to the end. But it's like, honestly, that, that optional content is stuff that I really enjoy in Elden Ring. And, it you know, it's been, well, I don't know, like five months or so since I last played Elden Ring, so, you know, I, it, uh, I, 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 I don't feel like it's a waste to go back and play this stuff again, even though I don't need to do any of it. But yeah, no, Elden Ring on the Steam Deck OLED is amazing. It was amazing on the original Steam Deck, and it's even better on the OLED. Um, then I realized that I'm talking more about the, the Steam Deck OLED than Elden Ring itself, but man, is it ever fun. Uh, Elden Ring, it's a fucking blast. All right, the next game that I'm playing, Rogue Genesea. Still playing this on PC. Uh, so yeah, Rogue Genesea is another one of these Vampire Survivors clones. This one is kind of an interesting one because it has this uh, level progression that is very similar to something like Slay the Spire. Um, but it has, you know, I, I said this last time, but it has very quickly become like my go-to game for uh, when I just want to unwind at the end of the night before I go to bed. Uh, I just want some arcadey goodness. I want to put on some music and just kind of zone out. Uh, used to be that, that Vampire Survivors was the one that I would do that with. Now Rogue Genesea has become the one I do it with. Uh, I still love Vampire Survivors. I'm not saying that's not a good game. And I'm very anxiously awaiting the new DLC, even though I don't really care too much about Among Us. But I'm still really excited for the DLC regardless. Um, but yeah, no, I really love Rogue, Rogue Genesea. And it's a lot of fun. I... I am enjoying the hell out of it. Um, I've kind of gotten to this point where I've unlocked most, I think I've unlocked all of the characters and I have unlocked most of the weapons and many of the evolutions of the weapons. I'm now kind of going through and finding the things that I've missed and trying to unlock them. Um, I'm also, I can't remember if I have finished all of the ranked modes or not. Uh, I, I can't remember what the highest rank I have unlocked is, but I feel like I've already beaten it and it hasn't unlocked another rank, so maybe I've already finished all of those. Um, I don't know. Regardless, Rogue Genesee is a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's a great game, and I, I don't have anything else to say about it. Alright, so the last game that I'm playing... And again, I mean, everything that's on this list was on last week's list, so nothing is new this week. Uh, but the last game that I am playing is The Solitaire Conspiracy. I'm playing this on PC. Uh, I own it on the Epic Game Store. You know, I mentioned The Solitaire Conspiracy last time, and, uh, you know, it's this solitaire game that 
I mean, vaguely solitaire. It really doesn't have quite the same rules as solitaire, but it's it's definitely inspired by solitaire. Uh, but it's a solitaire game or a solitaire inspired game that uh, includes this like uh, meta narrative of this this espionage spy versus spy kind of world. Um, but it's pretty darn fun, and I really am enjoying it. I, I, I've already beaten it before, but like I said last time, uh, you know, it didn't save to any sort of cloud. So uh, installing it on my PC that is new since the last time I played it, uh, I'm, you know, basically having to play through the game again, and I don't mind that. It's a pretty fun game. So one thing that I've noticed while playing it this time that has kind of blown me away because I didn't notice it before, um, Elena Pierce... Uh, she is uh, she's a YouTuber. She's also a game journalist. She worked. I think she worked at IGN. She definitely worked at um, uh, what's the name of the place? Is it Funhouse? Yeah, she definitely worked at Funhouse. Is it Funhouse? Is that the name of the place? I don't. I don't fucking remember. Um, she's now on her own, and she's done consulting for games and stuff like this. Um, she's pretty cool. I, I I like her stuff. I I. I, th I think she's interesting and she's puts out some fun content. But the point is, uh, she is one of the characters in Solitaire Conspiracy. And I didn't know this before. Either, you know, either I didn't know who she was when I first played the game, or I didn't recognize her. It's probably that I didn't know who she was. Um, but now I do, and now that I'm playing it, you know, I get to the cutscenes with her in it, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Elena Pierce! Holy crap! <laughs> Which, I don't know, it's just kind of funny. It's, it's always funny to see somebody that you don't expect in a video game playing a character. Like, that's always an entertaining thing, and I don't know, it's just, maybe my brain is, is amused by simple things like that, but it, I don't know, I just found it really amusing to, to see her in the game. It's kind of a shock. Um, but yeah, no, I'm enjoying Solitaire Conspiracy. I think I'm getting pretty close to the end. Um, maybe I'm not. I, I don't know. I, I don't remember. The problem with this kind of a game is it's not something I really sit down and play in one sitting. It's the sort of thing where, you know, if I've got like 10, 20 minutes and I just don't want to fire up a, a more complicated game like Lords of the Fall that's going to require more uh, time commitment on my part, you know, I'll fire up something like Solitaire Conspiracy and play it. Um, but I will admit I have been playing it a lot more. I mean, obviously I haven't played it in a couple of years, but I am playing it quite a bit lately. And so it, it warrants getting on this list because I'm playing it and I'm enjoying it. And it's a lot of fun. You know, um, I got my Atari 2600 plus came last week. Um, and I've played a couple of things with it, but I haven't put, um, any sort of real time into those games yet. So I'm not including it in this list. Um, part of the problem is I I had to upgrade my my television. It was a forced upgrade. Uh, my previous HDTV died. And it was one that was a little old. It only it only went up to 1080p. Um, but the reason that I hang I, I the reason I uh, hung on to it, hang on to it. Oh man, I hate I hate hung versus hanged. I have to figure out where I at which word I have to use. The reason I held on to it. How about we use that term? The reason I held on to it and used it as my primary driver for as long as I did, even though you know it only went up to 1080p. Um, what, the reason I held on to it for so long was because it had an obscene amount of ports on the back, like it had spectacular number of ports. Um, I'm trying to remember what the monitor was. What the, not, it wasn't a monitor, it was an HDTV. I think it was a Sony, I think. But it had an obscene amount of ports on the back. It had, I think it had something like four or five HDMI ports. It had two uh, SVGA ports. It had a digital, what is that, DVI port. Um, it had... Um, it of course had you know the the coaxial cable in, but then the really crazy thing was that it had the two little screws in the back, so that you could put in like rabbit ears from the '70s, but more specifically, so that I could put in things like the original Atari 2600 or my Magnavox Odyssey on it. And admittedly, they didn't look great because there was no that you know you're just using the stock upscaling that was baked into the TV, wasn't going through a retro tank. But the fact that I could hook 
so many devices up to my old TV was the reason that I held on to it for so long. Last year, no, not last year, earlier this year, it died. It was one of these situations where there was a pop sound and then uh, a bad smell came from the TV. <laughs> and then uh, the next time I turned it off, it wouldn't turn back on. And presumably some capacitor broke inside, you know, something burst. Uh, but now it just won't turn on. And so I had to buy a new HTTV. And so I went and got, you know, big fancy 4K um, giant, utterly enormous, like even bigger than my previous one. Um, and that's what I'm playing on. And I really love it because I've never had 4K before. And it's really amazing. <laughs> and I've got a PC that's capable of pushing most games at 4K. Stuff like Alan Wake eh, was a little hard. But for most games, it works. So I really do love my TV. But the problem with my new TV is it lacks all of those ports that my old TV had. It only has four HDMI inputs, and that's it. And that sucks. Like, for somebody who has as many consoles as I have, and who likes to have a lot of consoles hooked up, only having four ports is kind of obscene. Um, the other problem is, I had I have these HDMI switches. I have, th I have three, of, three of them. And uh, none of them support 4K... None of them support HDMI 2.1, which means they can't do, what is it, like 4K at 120 hertz? They can't do that. Um, they, they cap out at 60 hertz. Um, so I've got a new HDMI port or an HDMI switch that supports 2.1 that I will put all my 2.1 stuff on. I haven't hooked it up yet. <clears throat> and then I will take my existing three ones and split them between all the other consoles that I want to hook up. The problem is, with everything that I have hooked up right now, they completely fill 100% of the ports on all of my switches. So I have nothing free to permanently plug in my Atari 2600 Plus. I had to unplug another console to plug it in. And what I unplugged was the PlayStation 4, which I think I'm going to put on the shelf because I haven't turned on my PlayStation 4 in like two years. The only reason I even had it around anymore was because the PlayStation 4 VR games aren't compatible with PlayStation 5. Um, but we haven't played it, so I don't want to have it occupy an HDMI port. <laughs> the point is, I don't have enough room to add the Atari 2600 Plus. Uh, my Polymega is supposed to be shipping any day now. I'm still waiting on the shipping notification. And my uh, Analog Duo, their, their Turbo Duo um, FPGA-based system, is going to be shipping soon. And so that's like three systems that I don't have any place to put them. And so I, uh, I've been trying to figure out how to uh, plug everything in with the limited amount of switches that I've got. Um, in fact, I've got this big uh, stickies dock. I might footage of me showing the dock where I'm like dragging the different consoles that I want to have hooked up around to try to figure out how to uh, hook everything up. I think I'm going to have to daisy chain them. I, I think I'm going to have to have one uh, HDMI switch go into another in order to accomplish this because, you know, short of replacing every single HDMI switch that I have, which I don't really want to do, they're all perfectly functional for games that don't require 4k uh, 120 hertz you know for consoles that, that can't support that anyway while they're perfectly functional they don't have enough ports so i might have to get one more and then kind of do this crazy thing where one hdmi switch goes into another hdmi switch and then you have to think okay oh i want to play this console so on this switch i've got to hit four and on this switch i've got to hit three it's going to take something that's right now too complicated for the rest of my family to use. <laughs> I have to be there to push all the switches because they can't keep track of where things are. It's going to take something that's already too complicated and make it even more complicated. And I have been putting it off. I've been putting off doing the work because I'm going to have to tear everything apart and reposition everything and hook them all back up. 
And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm busy. I'm stupid busy. And I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. It is, it is yet another project that's in my backlog that I don't want to do. Um, so that's the reason I haven't, I'm not reporting any Atari 2600 games as a game that I'm playing because it is going to be effort in order to get my 2600 hooked up in a way that I can consistently play games with it. And that sucks. Anyway, that's it. I'm done. See ya.